Welcome to this joint conversation between me, Kate MacDonald, Handheld Press, and Lucinda Gosling of the Mary Evans Picture Library. We're going to be talking about book covers because a lawful lot of the Handheld Press book covers come from Mary Evans. And then we have... Well, naturally. <laughs> then we have... Yeah, this David is another of Wright. my favourites. This is David Wright, painted by David Wright. Yes. Or Margaret Kennedy, where stands a winged sentry, which is... Margaret Kennedy's journal, her diaries of 1940. Um, so we have Dunkirk, we've got the Blitz, we've got the Battle of Britain, we've got evacuation, we've got bombing. She's living in Surrey with her children and she evacuates to Cornwall to St Ives. And it's about what it was like. And she's constantly questioning. It's not a novel, it's a memoir and, a, and a, a, it's sort of semi-dated so you can sense the, the, the passage of time. Lots of conversations reported with friends and neighbours, observations. This is what happened when a bomber flies overhead, everyone scuttles away. Um, and it's really powerful because it's quite unlike any other wartime memoir I've read. So I wanted her in the sense of a woman on the cover who was looking really quite questioning, who wasn't being the brave little woman at home, who wasn't being, certainly wasn't being Mrs Miniver. This is Mrs Miniver with the gloves off, who was antagonistic and then you fished out David Wright well um <laughs> just to give you know David Wright started out working as uh well he you know he, he was an illustrator and mm -hmm. he started out working on fashion magazines um providing covers for titles like home notes um the sort of 1930s women's fashion magazines and that in doing that he met his wife Esme who was a model mm. and she was an absolute stunner we've got yeah. photographs of her what a beauty um and and what he did uh, he was commissioned by the sketch magazine um and I think the first one was it 1940 or 41 anyway um to do a series of pinups which were known as David Wright's lovelies <laughs> they were published every week in the sketch and they were pinups they were designed to you know they were printed on slightly different glossy paper designed to be torn out and they were hugely popular. We know all about the American pinup artists like Gil Elfrin and mm. whatnot, but David Wright was homegrown. Yeah. And he certainly sort of produced a slightly different pinup as well, a little bit more kind of, um, you know, elegant and sophisticated looking, not quite so pneumatic. Yeah, anyway, just happened uh, not so, to wear many clothes. No, they didn't wear them. Well, that's quite interesting, actually, because sometimes they were really quite risque, but the sketch mm. had always, you know, it was always um, of trying to appeal to quite a cosmopolitan, sophisticated readership. Mm -hmm. And I think it kind of liked to think of itself as a bit Parisian in that respect. <laughs> um, so some of them are quite like, whoa, that's quite saucy. And then another week, he'll just have a head and shoulders woman in a turban. I mean, really attractive, looking a bit seductive, mm -hmm. but she's fully clothed. And I think that's quite interesting. Yeah. Or somebody in a uniform. So yes. he did mix it up a bit. Mm -hmm. And this one, I can't remember what date this one was published, but it's called My Favourite Model, Mrs. Mm -hmm. David Wright. And it is of Esme. Now, lots of his pinups were based on Esme. He would get her to pose in wigs, but he'd also get uh, the wives and girlfriends of friends to pose. But this one is undoubtedly her. And if you yeah. look at photographs of her and yeah, she and now apparently they did have quite a tempestuous marriage and she went off and had affairs and things um there's poor old david at his easel you know oh. churning out these pinups and, and yeah. he's running amok um <laughs> but you can see that you can see she's absolutely no walkover mm. um she's got that you know one eyebrow raised yeah i think really how long uh, have I got to stand here? And, and she's <laughs> in that, you know, fabulous, slightly masculine wartime out, which is just, oh, you know, yeah, she's wonderful. She looks sh chic, you know, self-possessed and mm -hmm. um, yeah, <clears throat> nobody's fool. No, and she's got painted nails, super, um, the, the makeup's gorgeous. Yeah. And she's got wartime dungarees and a beautiful frivolous silk blouse, but short sleeved. Oh, she looks wonderful. And nothing like Margaret Kennedy, but that's not the point. It's questioning attitude. Um, and it also reflects the title because the title is um, A Little Outre, where stands a winged sentry. It's from a 18th century poem, which is much more well known, certainly in Kennedy's day, as a hymn. Um, so it would have been a phrase ah. you would have sung in church yeah. um, or heard it as an anthem. 
I think the anthem would have been played at like memorials and big state and sort of national events. And then you've got it with a, <laughs> a very beautiful glamour girl. Yeah. But it also means this is someone watching the Germans approach because that's what the book is about. It's about we don't know what's going to happen in this war. And I'm writing this, this, this journal and I'm going to send it to my friends in America to keep it safe because it's important that we have a record of what is going to happen or what had happened no matter what may happen in the future. Yeah. And the book was published in America in 1943, I think. I've forgotten, 42, 43. And it kind of sank without trace and has never until now been published in Britain. So it's a lost Kennedy that no one really knew about. And I knew about it because I went to a conference about 10 years ago in America and an academic there mentioned it in passing as in the subject of wartime memoirs. And I thought, oh, Margaret Kennedy, never heard of that. And it's a title you don't forget. So when I was having a meeting with the Curtis Brown um, heritage agent she yeah. said and we have this estate and we have margaret kennedy's estate and we have this amazing book where it stands up in its century and i said give it to me now yeah and that's how we took it and nobody knew about it it's um well, well you've yeah. sold it to me i think this is the, the next one i'm going to order from you actually i, <laughs> I really good. want to read it so, <laughs> it is great. a beautiful book and it's done very well 